Welcome back to Fresh Outlook. On Thursday, Microsoft announced its biggest round of layoffs in its history. As many as 18,000 employees, or up to 14% of Microsoft's workforce, will lose their jobs. And the layoffs are also historic because they are the fourth biggest in the tech world. Here's more on that story. Microsoft says it will slash up to 18,000 jobs, or 14% of its workforce, this year. The aim is to trim its newly acquired Nokia phone business, and that will account for 12,500 jobs. The PC giant is trying to reinvent itself into a cloud computing and mobile-friendly software company. The larger-than-expected cuts are the deepest in the company's 39-year history. CEO Satya Nadella wrote on the company website, we are moving now to start reducing the first 13,000 positions, and the vast majority of employees whose jobs will be eliminated will be notified over the next six months. It's important to note that while we are eliminating roles in some areas, we are adding roles in certain other strategic areas. Josh Green, CEO of Panjiva, joins us now to talk about this historic announcement, and we thank you for being here again a second week in a row in Thanks the hot seat. Um, you know who dodged a bullet on this one was Seattle. Uh, because most of the job cuts are going to come from Hungary and Finland. And Josh, if you could just uh, briefly explain that to us. Yeah, I mean, poor Finland. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they, uh, they aren't known for a lot, but they were known for Nokia. Yes. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, Nokia got the shaft for sure. But I think Microsoft was thinking that from the beginning. You're the expert, but that was sort of the plan from the beginning, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this, you know, this was, it's important to remember, this was, this was Bomber's deal. So the, the former CEO right. of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. uh, and in some respects, um, the, the current CEO is essentially uh, taking the next step and uh, trimming down uh, the Nokia workforce and refocusing Microsoft on uh, its core business. But the, uh, no question, the, the, the bulk of the layoffs here are not Microsoft as we typically think of it, it's Nokia. Right, and that was like a, what, a $7 billion deal of some, just a pretty, I guess you might call that a mistake. It's <laughs> <laughs> a shift into that part of the world, right? Because they were going to be obsolete soon, obsolete soon if they didn't expand, wasn't that the Well, plan? so perhaps, I mean, you know, in some respects, this, this feels a little bit like the circle of life when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, startups that evolve into huge corporations that themselves see them, or see themselves uh, being hurt by other startups. Microsoft uh, recognized that its dominance in a Windows-centric world was starting to erode. And they thought that they needed to get into the world of mobile. Now, the problem is, and I think we've seen this story play out time and time again, it, the problem comes when companies try to be something that they're not. And mm -hmm. the truth is, mm -hmm. Microsoft is not a hardware business. Mm -hmm. They tried to get into this space, and now we're seeing the end result. And of course, the new CEO, Satya uh, Nadella, he also is trying to make his mark, wouldn't you say? I mean, he's going to try and launch, his, launch the company into a new, new era. Yeah, no question. He talked about a cloud-centric mm -hmm. and mobile-centric uh, approach for Microsoft with a focus on productivity, which, uh, you know, it's interesting because, you know, there is an argument that Nokia or some remnant of Nokia fits into that vision. And in contrast, there's some parts of Microsoft that wouldn't seem to fit into that vision at all, like Xbox. So I think you know, some of the questions that are being raised are uh, not just about this first step, but what are the next steps uh, by Nadella? Well, and I think your point is, uh, you, you, know, you said that before, um, that a lot of companies try and do something or be something that they're not. And one of the things that the uh, CEO came out with was he wants to simplify things. You know, the diversity is what people talk about, you know, expanding your base and getting into different things. But I think your point is really excellent because you should focus on what you're really good at. Yeah. And a lot of companies think they're good at one thing and then they try to get into something else. And the psychology of all of that doesn't work. It backfires. Well, what about if you're good? I mean, some people are good jack of all trades, if you will. Yeah, but they're in the minority. <laughs> usually, I don't, usually, think, usually, well, okay. I don't usually, think Microsoft is good at anything. <laughs> I think they're doomed. I think they're looking at Blackberry. I'm shocked Blackberry's even around. I, I, they're having trouble. They're in dangerous territory, for sure, because trying to figure out what they are, I mean, they could go down quickly. Well, look, when a, when a company lays off 18,000 people. When That's it, a big deal. When it can survive without 18,000 people, you know, number one, they were too big. And number two, there's some real problems underneath the, the covers. And if you look at Microsoft, 
I think they are trying to figure out mm -hmm. what is their place in the ecosystem going forward. And a lot of times the answer is that there isn't a place, mm -hmm. but no CEO ever wants to admit that. Of course not. Well, yeah, but if you want, let's let's well. make predictions uh, for the next year for Microsoft. It, it, we'll start with you, Didi. Yeah, I, I don't see good things. I think they're struggling and they're going to continue to go downhill. Apple all the way. <laughs> <laughs> they can't be Apple. They're you know, trying to talk about the cloud and everything. I'm like, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, Josh, are you a big Apple fan, a big cloud fan? What, 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 I mean, what do you think for Microsoft? Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge Apple fan, and, and frankly, you know, some people forget that, that Microsoft actually helped save Apple in one of its yeah, uh, darkest moments. Yeah, thanks for your help, moments. Microsoft. You're on your way out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, and now Apple is ascendant. But, you know, it is interesting to note that Microsoft, uh, the stock has done quite well. Uh, since Bomber uh, headed for the exits. And, and I think there are people that are betting uh, that Microsoft has not seen um, uh, the end of its glory Well, days. your point that they can well, take Well, it's, yeah, it's yeah. also a competitor, and there's always good to have some competition out mm -hmm. there as well. No question. Yeah, I, I think they could make it. I think they could uh, find their place, but I think they need to, to go there yet. They need to find it. And this, this idea of diversifying and doing things that are so different uh, really is not a great idea. I, I think that the jack of all trades in, in business is uh, a small percentage of reality. I think most people are good at certain areas and they should probably just focus on that. And that's why Apple, uh, I'm unanimous here with Apple, because I think that they have such a product and a way of presenting themselves. It's like gadgetry and people. Well, it, you know? it, it's an experience when you go into the Apple stores. We've talked yes. about that before. In fact, I had to spend quite a bit of time fixing my phone this week, <laughs> and it is an experience. But let's talk about some of the CEOs. You know, you have Bill Gates, you had Steve Jobs. I mean, you've got Josh Green of Pangeva. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> but you the biggest one of all. <laughs> and, and he's here right now. He's here right here. <laughs> no, but in terms of um, you know having sort of like a celebrity CEO, do you think that that helps a company mm -hmm. like like uh, Microsoft? You know, it, it's it's interesting because I think, you know, you're, you're touching on one aspect of, of um, you know, what made Bill Gates and Steve Jobs who they are, th this kind of celebrity status. But part of it is also they were founders. Mm -hmm. And when you are a founder and CEO of the company, you, uh, you're in a position to really drive the culture of the company. And I think one of the transitions that's difficult is when companies uh, move to a, a CEO that is not uh, the founder. And the question is, what happens to the culture, right? And people are asking these questions now about Apple. Yeah, you know, we're saying yeah. good things sure. about yeah. Apple, but the truth is people are saying, is Apple, does, does it still have its mojo right. without right. Steve Jobs? See, and I, I agree. I think the CEO is important. The personality, or the winning personality, if you will, of the CEO, I think is critical to a big company. I think it's extremely important, even small companies, because how the company presents itself usually goes through the CEO, and if you have the wrong person in charge, I think it's a real Except problem. Young people think Microsoft's sort of a dinosaur. I think you know, and, and you know, the young people, lots of times, they're buying all the gadgets. It's like, mm, no. Do you, do you agree with I that, Josh? Do you difference. think it, you, do you see like younger people with Apple and older people and, and Microsoft be, being more like the dinosaur? So I think there's certainly an element of truth to that. I mean, if you look at uh, you know the work world today, right? Less and less work is being done on Microsoft products. Right, more and more. Who wants to open Windows? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Or have a right? BlackBerry. That's I'm, I'm, I make fun of people that have BlackBerry. Listen, I <laughs> like the BlackBerry. I am going to. Um, I'm going to get hold on to it. Hold on to it. It'll it'll be a good museum piece one day. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I liked it for typing TV scripts. I really did. It yeah, was no, fantastic for that. Enough. No, and, and and Microsoft. You know, I think what 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 Nadell has gotten right is when he focuses on productivity because Microsoft for all their, uh, the things they got wrong, they did really empower productivity in an information-centric workplace. And they have the potential to continue to drive uh, productivity, but there are going to have to be some big shifts. We'll see if he can pull it off. Well, he, and he was talking about the cloud. Yeah. I wasn't really sure. Like, wh wh where is he going with that? Well, He's the, copying Apple. Right. No, just no, gonna, that's not no, fair. Know, that's not I fair. I think, actually, the, in some respects, the, the competitor here is Google. So if I, look at, true, at the folks, if I look at the folks inside our company, we're using things like Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets, which are basically web-based, cloud-based versions of Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. And that's a real threat, because those tools are free. I agree with you. Hmm. 
Um, let's just uh, switch topics and change lanes, if you will, a little bit and talk about uh, Rupert Murdoch. Um, yes. <laughs> so uh, anybody w want to talk about that, about that little deal uh, after those Sun Valley talks that we uh, spoke about last week? Well, I think Rupert Murdoch is a genius and, you know, and he went for the deal. It didn't work, but who's to say it won't work again? But boy, I think his goal in life is to certainly to be the the, the mega god, <laughs> you know, in media, because if, if he would get that deal cut, Wow. That would be amazing. It would I mean, be. He, 83 years old. The guy still got it. He oh, does. He does. I mean, talk about mojo. He's it a rock is, star. <laughs> it, is, it is amazing. I mean, $75 billion deal going for, for that prize. I mean, it's extraordinary. And, and to your point, Dee Dee, right, this is, this is the first act. Right? And this is, this is classic Rupert Murdoch. Right? He makes an offer. It gets rejected. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting is what comes next. And uh, all right, let's just talk uh, about I, that yeah. personality only because <laughs> you know, he gets shot down, you know, but he always comes back. Rupert, I mean, I think he's amazing. Yeah. I, I do. I mean, whether you like yeah. him or not, right, right, right. He, yeah. he's, um, uh, he's an amazing. Yeah, uh, no matter which side of the political aisle you, you fall on, I think you have to give him credit. And also, again, at 83, he's got it, and he, he, he has a personality that, that definitely wins out in the end. I mean, he's a winner in many respects. So you have to take a look at him, and how does he do it, you know? And I think, I think he. Uh, he has a lot of good strategies and a lot of good sides to his personality that are very effective. So I have a hypothesis, which is, for him, it's sport. It's <laughs> sport. Absolutely. absolutely. I agree with you. You're right. so I mean, right. He doesn't need the money, right? Mm -hmm. He, he mm -hmm. doesn't need the power. He's got plenty of both. Boy, that's great psychology there. I like that. No, I, like I, that. I absolutely agree with that. Like and, that. And why not? Yeah. Why, and most people that are that not, successful right? in that mm -hmm. age, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. most of them, they're on their yacht or on some island that they bought. And by the way, he's got playing. a nice yacht. He could be on he that yacht. Probably to agree. But, but, you know, it's, it, it is interesting. I mean, and, and it, when I say he's still got it, it's not just because he's making a big offer for, you know, a great media property. It's actually a, a really brilliant tactical move. And, and in some respects, it, it's necessary because you're seeing consolidation of distribution channels in media. There's going to be consolidation of content. And he mm -hmm. wants to be a leader of that as opposed to a follower. And you got to give him credit. And this is what's cool about Rupert Murdoch, too. You know, he, he, he tweets things out. He tweets things that are <laughs> controversial. And I'm sure a lot of people say, oh, Rupert, did you really have to tweet them? He doesn't care. He's getting, you know, his agenda mm -hmm. out there. And he's just very active. And, and he just got a divorce, so he's still out there, you know, moving and shaking. And, you know, he's an interesting guy. <laughs> All right, uh, we have about a minute left. Um, we obviously um, have seen a lot of volatility in terms of uh, what's happening in the world right now between the Malaysian Airlines yeah. flight and certainly what's happening over in Gaza. Um, how, how do you think this is going to affect the markets this week? Didi? I'm going to have to hire Josh to get back because he's <laughs> an expert. I don't know. You know, it's so crazy. Who knows what will happen? Well, you know, what's interesting is, you know, we at Pangeva, we focus a lot on uh, the intersection of trade and politics. And mm. uh, there's no question that what's going on in the political sphere impacts business. But I think despite the turmoil in Israel, uh, the tragedy uh, with the Malaysia Airlines flight, I think the, the truth is from a business perspective, uh, there actually isn't news here in the sense that people already knew that Kiev right. and, uh, or that, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, the Ukraine and Russia, that there was turmoil there. And people knew that Israel was uh, of, you know, in a volatile place. So I think the markets have actually kind of internalized this. I, I uh, was going to say, yeah. I, I, I was surprised we didn't, uh, you know, I thought we were going to see a little bit of a, uh, we were going to go down, but we actually stabilized. So that was, that was good news this week. I think that's right. And I think, I think the question is, does uh, the scope of the conflict, either uh, with Russia or in Israel, does it expand? If it does, that but might have an impact. Yeah. Josh, hold, hang on, everybody. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, lots of heavy news this week, so we are going to lighten things up, everyone. When we come back, the lightning round. We'll be right back.